What's up, you guys? I'm here with a new video, and I'm here to finally talk about the ban list. Uh, I didn't give a shit when it came out. Honestly, it's not that great a list. Let's let's be honest. It's nothing great. There's nothing that just stands out and says, wow, we've been waiting eight months for this. Uh, yeah, basically, you know, everyone wants to be the first one to put it up, have their opinions, yada, 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 whatever. If you're not competing in any of the events coming up, it really doesn't affect you. I think the biggest thing we can talk about is that Unfortunately, this will probably be the list we play under for Nationals, so it does have that uh, impending uh, effect. Not too much happened, not much has changed, but we'll talk about it, and I'll just give you my personal opinions. So, uh, we had three banned cards. We had Kirin, the uh, Tyrant Neptune, and Emptiness. We'll start with the Tyrant Neptune. Said it before in another video, I don't know the thing, that fusion thing with Instant Fusion that creates some like 5500 indestructible piece of shit, so I don't really care. That's whatever, good riddance. Don't want to deal with any of that crap, so you're gone. Uh, next, we have Kirin. So Kirin, we see, we saw this coming. We talked about it on lists uh, for several months that this card would be gone. Uh, easily one of the most powerful uh, Pendulum monsters ever created. Easily with the best Magic Spectre, and just such a solid card for Pendulum decks, especially Metal Foes. They really use this card as a power, as like a, just a power card. Uh, walking Compulsory, that just you couldn't do anything about it. Uh, pretty crazy. So actually glad to see it go because we. Can all say how many times we've lost to this card so really not mad that this card's gone at all uh and lastly vanity's emptiness now i made a video months ago saying what would go first vanity's emptiness or anti-spell fragrance a lot of people lean towards anti-spell fragrance thinking that you know it does prevent an entire mechanic from playing that in pendulums however emptiness has been around for a lot longer came out in star strike blast for those of you who don't know and we had a format where three emptiness was staple in the main deck now a lot of people are happy to see this card go frankly i don't care i feel like emptiness has lost a lot of its power it's not been used that much since Zodiac came out. The problem with this card, though, is that it has been given the bad reputation of when you flip it, you usually win. The opponent, if they can't out it, they can't out it. Now, there's you know a counter argument for that that your deck should be able to play around a Vanity's Emptiness. That it, if it can't, you need to rebuild your deck. Uh, I really, at the end of the day, don't care that Emptiness is gone. I'll miss the card. I think the card was good at certain times, but I can see why people are glad the card's gone. I've lost to it many times myself, just not drawing it out, having it out in my deck, just not drawing it so i feel that they decided to finally get rid of one of the floodgates however they did bring back a floodgate on this list so it's interesting that they decided to basically trade one floodgate for another so it's interesting if vanity's emptiness you had a good run you've been around for a long time but you know your time has come so we won't have to worry about losing the emptiness anymore now limited to one the first one just i mean i just don't even know they put maxi to one uh, honestly, I'm probably on the other fence about this card. I felt this card was like a necessary evil. You needed this card to fight back when you lost the die roll. Opening this card going first or second was just solid. It made it so that your opponent would not overcommit, so you got to play Yu-Gi-Oh! the next turn. I honestly wanted this card to just stay at three. When it first went to two, I was already just like, why? Like, this card at least makes it so that going second, you don't completely, you're not a, a complete disadvantage. But now that it's at one, I guess everyone Everyone's just going to be able to be free to go off, and hopefully you can just break the board with a board wipe or something else. So, I honestly hate to see Maxi at one. Uh, people feel that it's like so bad for the game that it needs to be banned. I mean, I don't personally feel that way. I feel that Maxi was there to counterbalance how powerful going first was that's just my opinion however most people will say you know how many times they've lost to this card how ycs's have been determined by the opponent opening this card first second and third game so nothing i can say about that i hate to see the card at one will it still be played i think some decks will still try to play it i feel that you know if you can get to it you get to it and i guess you just gamble at getting the card because it just is that powerful a card so maxi you're at one uh hopefully you don't get banned i mean Honestly, at one, I don't know if we'll really see the difference. I mean, we can search it, but I don't really know how much we're willing to invest in our main decks to search this card. So, Maxi is now gone. Now, on to all the erratas. So, the first one is Rescue Cat. Uh, love to see Rescue Cat back, honestly. It's been so many years since this card was out during Synchro Cat format. Uh, the errata, I believe, I believe all these erratas are up to date on uh, YGO Pro. Hopefully they are. It says you can send this card, face-up card from your graveyard to special summon two or three or lower level beast monsters from your deck. Their effects are negated, also destroyed during the end phase. So basically it kept the same effect. 
Uh, the only thing is you can only use it once per turn, which, I mean, thank God, because if you were able to use multiple rescue cats, that would be insane. So basically, you can just do the old combos we did with Summoner Monk. So it'll be interesting to see what people do with this. Um, X-Saber Arabella may see the light of day again, so I think that's really cool for an old card to come back. So yeah, glad Rescue Cat is back. Uh, next one is Brain Control. This card is just absolute ass. <laughs> uh, this, this card is just terrible. Um, if you read it, you pay 800 life points, you target one face-up monster your opponent controls that can be normal summoned or set. Take control of that monster until the end phase. I don't think anyone's going to play this card. Very rarely will there be a monster that you really want to take with this card. So yeah, I'm not even really talking about it. Uh, next one is Future Fusion. Basically, it slows down by one turn. Now, a lot of people might just um, automatically you know, just dismiss this card. I wouldn't do that just yet. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't know how, you know, probable it would be, but the dream would be to activate this, sending all nine pieces of the ABC Buster Dragon to the graveyard, and if you somehow survive, uh, you can summon three Buster Dragons, because Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I don't know if people are going to be using this to uh, summon Five-Headed Dragon, but I think it's just cool that nostalgic cards like this are back. Um, if you want to play it, play it. Honestly, if you're going to have fun playing dragons or playing something that can use Future Fusion, do it. We, um, haven't seen Future Fusion since Chaos Dragon days, so it'll be interesting to see if people actually find a way to utilize Future Fusion. It has gotten slower, unfortunately, but, I mean, that's a sacrifice you make when, uh, powerful cards come back into the game. So, yeah. And last, but definitely not least, Imperial Order. Welcome back. It's been way too long, my old friend. Um, so this card, I remember playing this card back in the day when I was just a little kid, and this card is insane. Pay 700 life points to gain all spells. It is just pretty nuts. So, the difference with Imperial Order now is that you you have to pay the 700 life points. You do not have that option, which was something I didn't fully understand at first until I reread the card. You are forced to pay 1,400 life points every, um, uh, you know, every passing turn, every passing turn of you and your opponent. So 700 during your turn, 700 during their turn, and yeah, you negate all spells. I think Paleozoics just really got a huge boost with this card, even more so. Nothing got hit for Paleozoics on the list, so they're gonna really utilize this card. Uh, basically, you just you can activate it to when your opponent activates the spell, and it's just like, well, I guess I'm negating the rest of your spell, and then you just continue to play, and then you eventually win. People might think 700 each turn is a lot, but honestly, like if it's winning you the game. Game, it, it'll be enough. Trust me, you'll find a way to win before you know you let anything else stop you. Because let's face it, how many times have we lost to Dark Hole and Regeki, and those won't even be a problem anymore? And you can't even twin twister it away. So I think it's really cool. Uh, the Imperial Order's back, and I can't wait to play it. I have several copies, so I'm super excited for that. So those are the cards that uh, came back to one. Uh, very interesting. Uh, a lot of erratas. So be cool, interesting to see what ends up happening. Oh yeah, and of course Brianek. My bad, I forgot Brianek. So Brianek always one of the best level sixes. Uh, it has been errata. Uh, the way it works now is you can only target cards your opponent controls, so unfortunately you can't loop any of your cards the way we used to do it with old uh, fish decks and stuff like that. So basically you can only do it once per turn and target as many cards uh, your opponent controls, send that many cards, you know, bounce them, you can only use it once per turn. But I still think this card will be really good. I think in le in certain decks it'll replace uh, Coral Dragon, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see Brianek come back. Now the limited to twos, we'll start with Wisdom Eye Magician. Not really much to say. With Link Summoning, we don't know what's really going to happen with Pendulums, but I guess this is a boost for anyone that's going to play uh, Pendulum decks or Odd Eyes Magician decks. So I'm uh, just glad they're, you know, getting some of their power back. Nothing else to say about that. Now, the rat. <laughs> the rat went to two. Now, does this mean Zoo's dead? Absolutely not. You can just play Instant Fusion, and you'll probably still end with Dryden and a... Uh, Dryden in a, a Emerald or something like that. I'm sure there's some crazy combos. I know people are already posting up videos about the combos and how you can still play Zodiac. So hitting Ratatouille did hurt the overall powerful combo, but you're still able to play. Teratop didn't get hit, so you still have your free special summons. So I think as long as cards like that are still in the game, uh, Zoo are still going, to, still going to be played. They're just going to be played a different way. So yeah, so we're still in a Zoo format. And uh, last but not least, I went to two, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Honestly, that doesn't do much. It, I guess, lowers the consistency of you seeing it, but you can still play four Kaijus and two Slumbers, so I think we're going to be fine. Uh, Kaiju went down in popularity as the most popular version of Zoo, so if you, I know a lot of people side into it, so this just makes your side deck easier by one card. You only have to side six cards now, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as, uh, you know, the stuff that went to two. And last but not least, they brought back good old Sangan. So, uh, it's errata is if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, uh, you can add one monster, 1,500 or less, from your deck to your hand. But you cannot activate cards or the effect of cards with that name for the rest of the turn. So, basically, you can't 
like search. I, I guess you can't search Maxi and activate in the same turn, or you can't like search something and use it in the same turn. I, I don't really know. Um, Sangen being unlimited now is interesting. You can only use it once per turn. I guess the only cool thing, I guess you can play it in Metal Foes. You can pendulum it out and pop it with the one of the Metal Foes effects and then search Max C. So, I mean, there is that, so that's kind of cool. But, yeah. So, that is the whole list, you guys. My overall thoughts. I think it could have been a lot better. I think they could have definitely, um, you know... They could have definitely hit more cards. I mean, they left Norden. I mean, that's kind of insane, you guys. They left Norden. They left Zoo pretty much almost at full power. They touched nothing in Paleozoics. I'm not complaining because I like Paleozoics, but they really didn't do anything to hinder any of the decks that are being played right now. Uh, this didn't really fix any problems. I feel like it just made it to where, um, you know, Zoo has taken a hit, so now other decks will rise up. And I'm hoping that's what happens. I really hope that we're not stuck in the Zoo format again. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, did you like the list? Did you not like the list? Personally, I, I feel that this list was very mediocre for how as long as we've waited, but I'm not the one who makes a ban list, so I just have to play under it. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, our next event will be YCS Denver, so uh, what decks do you think will be good? I feel like decks like ABC and other decks will start to come back again, so it'll be interesting to see how the format shapes up and how the meta will change. So yeah, let me know what you guys think so in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.